I believe a lot of people are losing their minds when it comes to this black misandrist therapist. They can't seem to understand why her employer fired her and they want to blame black men for it. Our brother here in the comments says, it's always Jermaine's fault. Referring to black women who always blame black men for everything, that was brought up in one of the stories I covered a few weeks ago about the mother in New Orleans who took out her daughter and attempted to ex her son and herself and then told everybody on live, it's always Jermaine's fault, blaming her baby daddy Jermaine for what she did because he took her to court for custody. It was Jermaine in that story, jumped in his car and rushed over there to her house to rescue his kids. Because Lord knows, sometimes them folks take a long time to show up in New Orleans. So he grabbed his kids and rushed them to the hospital. Unfortunately, it was a really bad ending. You can check out that story for yourself. The link will be below in the description. But after the mother did what she did, the only thing she can say is, it's all Jermaine's fault. So yeah, that's what this brother right here is referring to. You had some people saying it was her opinion, but no, she's not just some internet commentator. Y'all are getting podcasts and real life professionals mixed up. Brittany Renner, she can go online and say whatever it is that she wants to say. She's not a licensed therapist. This woman is. It's another example of how the so-called professionals are following the footsteps of the 304s. People on podcasts that give opinions and they too can get in trouble if their employer is unsatisfied with how they present themselves online. I've even discussed here one time how a woman out of Colorado lost her 90,000 per year job for talking too much on the internet. And she was a white woman. And that's another thing, people attempting to make this a white black issue. This is not it. Every time it's time to hold black people accountable for anything, I mean anything, even situations that have nothing to do with white people, why do we always use that time to talk about them instead of fixing the issue between black people? And that's why we can't get anywhere. How can you fix external issues if you don't first address internal issues and rectify those problems? This is an internal issue of a black misandrist who can't stand black men, but told her audience that 90% of her clients are black men. And she's saying things like, when y'all come to my office, Y'all have these issues and that issue and y'all dusty and y'all B's and H.O.'s and emotionally messed up. That's what she's saying about the clients coming to see her, which is totally unprofessional and out of order. She's even popping her thought pocket in almost every video, popping in mid-sentence while spewing these misandrous talking points. And since y'all want to make this a general issue and bring up other folks who have nothing to do with this, can someone please show me the white woman licensed professional therapist who's popping her thought pocket in every video while also talking crap about her demographic of clients, showing nothing but vitriol for them? Where's the Asian woman therapist doing this? I've never seen any Asian professional therapist jump online popping her thought pocket while babbling and complaining about her clients and potential clients, saying you're a dusty bee so you need to come talk to me, you know, so I can help you. Where is she? Where's the equivalent? And even if they don't like certain groups of people, they're not dumb enough to get online and risk their license, especially in the way this woman was carrying on. Y'all really don't want to talk about how horrible of a look this is. And then you have some people saying she's not a black American. Can we tell the truth? Even if she's not, she's looking like a black American and she's being perceived as one by the general public. So you know what that means? Her actions impact our general image as a group of black people in America, no matter what culture or nationality her folks are from. This woman is a horrible look for black female professionals in general, which is why black women got her fired. And I'll come back to that in a second. It's extremely difficult as a black female professional to be taken seriously. And people like her, they are a major part of the reason. And she may be a confirmation bias for people who don't like interacting with black women in professional settings. It's not cool at all that a woman like this can just act like that and not realize that she's representing an industry of black female therapists. People who work hard for their degrees, licenses, and take their work seriously for some bimbo to just jump up here, hopping on the internet and cursing, doing all this stuff. No professionalism whatsoever. Looking like a wannabe Magic City girl talking about come talk to her for therapy? 
poorly representing black women in the field and I believe that's why they told on her. You know, she and a few other misandrists in the comments blamed men, not once mentioning that it was black women who told on her. Shout out to our sister Yvette for letting me know that. I didn't even know that it was a black woman who put her information out there. She kept saying black men did it when it was black women who did it. And now that I look back on it, okay, it makes sense because black men, they don't usually call reporting people anyway. And I know why those women did it. They knew she was wrong. They knew she was being unprofessional. This woman has videos and videos and videos. It wasn't just one clip or two clips while also working for a practice. You can't do that. Either you're going to be a working professional or you're going to be a talking head on the internet. You can't be both. You're going to have issues. So of course, the company threw her off their website and got her out of there. She's a liability for sure. What if those deeply mentally unstable patients of hers that she was talking about missing her so bad decided to file a lawsuit against that company for having a person who absolutely hates men counsel men? What if they investigated what she was saying to them in those sessions? Listen, you don't understand the trouble that she could be up against. This is very serious. The practice who she worked for and represented could be held liable. And then you have some other feminists in here bringing up Kevin Samuels, talking about she's like Kevin Samuels. I guess comparing her criticism of men to Kevin Samuels' criticism of women. Well, one, Kevin said a lot of things about women and men. Women, of course, prioritize his content about women because you know when a man is talked about or held accountable, it's just another day. No one really cares. Kevin also had a lot to say about men, but those conversations rarely made it to the blogs. It didn't go viral. But we already know when women are held accountable, the world must stop for their feelings. Let me tell you why this woman's TikTok is totally different from Kevin Samuels. Just be objective, okay? Whether or not you support Kevin Samuels. The most important difference is Kevin Samuels was not a licensed therapist. This woman is. And those credentials that she highlighted in her videos, that changes everything about this situation. As a licensed professional, you have a responsibility to adhere to codes of ethics, conduct, patient confidentiality. You are governed by a board that's in charge of regulating you and all of the other professionals in your field. No different from lawyers with the bar or medical doctors and even nurses. So many industries. Financial advisors, they can't just get online and say whatever they want to say. That's because of their fiduciary responsibility. No one will risk going to school and then passing all those exams to bring this much drama to themselves just for clicks and views. And by the way, she was blaming other content creators reacting to her content, saying they did it for clicks and views when she was the one popping her thought pocket, spewing all these misandrous talking points for clicks and views. So yeah, it was funny that she said that. But Kevin Samuels, he didn't hold any professional licenses. So these two situations are nothing alike, which is a big issue for people, especially black women with modern mindsets. They can't be held accountable just like this lady here. Instead of acknowledging she's out of order, they defend it by bringing up somebody else's name. Kevin Samuels died months ago. Why would he be trending on social media for them to justify this so-called professional's actions on social media? You know, instead of saying this woman is supposed to be a professional and you're making black professionals look crazy. And to be fair, it was a group of black women who held her accountable. I'm assuming they're professionals and they didn't like what they saw. They knew it was out of order. Yet, she didn't do any videos talking about the people who got her fired. She's still blaming black men. That's just how much of a misandra she is. We already know if Kevin Samuels was a licensed therapist working for an organization, that organization would have fired him too. But this bimbo is too dense to realize you can't do what she did and still hold a job and a license. You're the one jeopardizing all of your hard work to be TikTok famous. It's amazing to me how she can say all that she's saying, but allow to continue to grow on TikTok. TikTok didn't terminate her account, although they terminated a lot of men's accounts for being offensive to women. They waste no time getting them out of there. Look at Andrew Tate. Every social media platform banned him. He's a law-abiding man. He's disciplined. He goes to church. And that's what they do to a man for his opinion. He's too cocky and arrogant for them, they like to say. And that's because women can have an opinion, but men can only have an opinion in this society if they agree with women. A man with confidence and strong beliefs, 
He's described as toxic masculinity, but of course, toxic femininity is openly accepted in Western culture. That's the modern day standard now. This channel is for men and women who don't want to live in that matrix. You have media openly supporting a self-proclaimed 304 advocate who is a licensed therapist. Yes, the same woman calls herself a 304 advocate and promotes promiscuous behavior to women, saying women should just run around and have relations because they're going to pass away one day anyway. Can you imagine the therapy that women will need after following silly advice like that? And I still don't understand how a person waving this LGBT flag, why is she so concerned with relations between heterosexual people? With that being said, shout out to all the supporters of this channel, supporters of the message and the overall goal. You understand, you get it, you appreciate the lessons here. These people will have to pay one day for their degeneracy. The rebels are disobedient, living however they want to live, all out of order, very disrespectful as if there's no higher power that gave them orders to follow men and women doing this completely out of order as if they will never have to answer for this behavior yeah go ahead and keep it up everybody will make their own decisions and will be held responsible for themselves let's go ahead and get the conversation started what do you think about all of this shout out to our brothers wesley and dark power i appreciate all of your support as well as our sister april w and andre Want to see more content like this? You can support the channel too. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balanced analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.